do it. Got it. Ah, great. So welcome everybody. You've had the update on the new puppy at the house, <laughs> your Wednesday night update. My name is Paul. I'll be your host tonight. It is Wednesday, July 6th, and we have a wonderful evening planned for you. So welcome one and all. Hello, church family. We like to call the Wednesday night service the midweek oasis. It's a place where we can be together as a community to be spiritually refreshed between Sundays. We present our Wednesday night services in our version of a satsang style, where we have an invited speaker speak, and then we go into some sharing. Um, we'll see what the evening brings. Um, but more than anything, our intention is that our gatherings be informal, intimate, and rich. Now, we are kicking off a new month here. Reverend Jerry kicked it off in the sanctuary on Sunday. And the monthly theme for July is living everyday wonder relationships. So that's going to be a super cool topic to focus on. But I really want to thank those that came forward for the body last month in June and helped us celebrate Pride Month on Wednesday nights. We had five speakers because there was five Wednesdays. So I give a shout out to practitioner and chaplain Doug Myers, who started us off. Then practitioner Dylan McClintock came in the next Wednesday. We had a special guest practitioner from the East Bay Church of Religious Science, K. Suzanne Massey. We also had one of our congregants, Sam Lejean. And then finally, closing the month was practitioner Chantal Rolfing. So a big thank you to all of them that helped us celebrate Pride Month and, and take a good look at our bodies. Now, I have an issue with that, but you all know about that. Um, our annual theme is Wonder, Wonder Everywhere. So I'm, I'm real excited about just knowing that there's Wonder, Wonder Everywhere. We want to welcome any new, new folks that have joined us tonight and please visit our homepage again and check to sign up for our Village News newsletter. You can get that um, in your email every week. It tells you what's coming up in the, in the coming week, has all the information on what's happening and how to connect. Um, for those that may have their camera and microphone on right now, we're going to ask you to make sure those are turned off so that we can improve the quality of the transmission. And please stay tuned for special and important announcements at the end. We will be reading the new minister's covenant letter tonight. So our speaker tonight is a practitioner she does body work and breathing work and she's been appearing almost every other month here um, on a regular basis and we always learn something new when Regina Buckwalter is in the house so I'm looking forward to what she is going to talk about tonight she was scheduled to talk about and I think this is still the same the self the primary and sacred relationship is that correct Regina Yes, it is. Excellent. <laughs> so to begin our program, we always do everything at, at, at Oakland Center. We start with prayer and end with prayer. So Regina, would you pray us in and then you can launch right into your topic. I will jump in. Okay. <laughs> so. Ah, wow. Simply settling in. Settling in. Means we feel our breath as that breath <clears throat> is the presence and we are the presence we tune in and we feel and we know we are one with spirit we settle in and we feel we breathe and we feel we settle in and we know that there is only love, always. It is the eternal, it is the most powerful, it is the healing presence of our lives. And we just tune in and breathe 
and we show up and we are here in the moment. And I am so very grateful being here and I bless the service. Mm. I bless the service as I know it is absolutely divinely orchestrated and the words that are spoken are words that are meant to be spoken and heard and received and breathed and experienced and embodied as we are here to embody the light. We are here to embody love. We are here to love. And I just release and I let go and I know that everything is absolutely peaceful, calm, and perfect. And so it is. Wow, 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 wow. Mm. This has been a real journey to define and to feel the relationship to self <clears throat> and bring forth my understanding and how I have organized relationship to self in my life. And before I begin, this is a moment of celebration for me because in the process, as I was in the Redwoods, which is my sanctuary, I got a revelation that I have been wanting and yearning for and wanting clarity about for years. And it came up out of this talk. And so um, kind of riding the wave of some joy and enthusiasm. And absolutely as part of this talk, I have been wanting words and a way to describe the platform of my work, the body of work that I have created over the last 40 years of transformation through the body. Uh, because it's what I speak from. It's where I speak from. It is my orientation. But the struggle and the mental analysis never was, was bringing forth the clarity. And what I got in the Redwoods, and I am going to trademark this, which makes it very exciting for me. The platform that I speak from is spiritual intimacy, the journey of embodiment. And so that is what we're going to be speaking about with also the title primary and sacred as our relationship with ourself and our quote sense of self is primary to how we live our life and when we say sense of self that means how do we sense ourselves it's it's simple basic primary how do we sense ourselves and how do we move in the world from that sensing and feeling experience? So the topic of relationship to self, as I said, is both very intimate and at the same time, very basic. And when, uh, well, and as I just said the word intimate, I just felt kind of like a little quiver. Oof in my heart because <clears throat> the sense that the essence of my relationship with myself, intimacy, is grounded in a gentle, vulnerability. And presence of love that has become my resting place throughout the day. And it is a place of comfort and at the same time, unexpected bliss. This center within me is spirit because I feel a vibrational sensation flowing in my body 
that I yearn. to stay connected in love. And I call this spiritual intimacy. This is that same gentle, tender place when two lovers get together and they're in that merging place of deep intimacy. It is that place of a mother and an infant where they are bonding and merging and it is timeless. And they, I'm speaking from myself, never wanted to separate. And that's why mm, in, in, some, in, in some situations, mothers never do separate and then it gets kind of crazy, but I'm not going to go down that path. I'm talking about those beautiful moments of, of intimacy with the infant. That is our vibrational experience of presence with the divine. It's, it's precious and gentle and tender and sweet. And it is there within all the time. All that we need to do is breathe, breathe and feel and focus and commit to going there and staying there. And yes, I want to return there. And we can. Now, the thing is, <laughs> we being human and we're on this earth to learn how to love and how to feel and how to be one with spirit. You know, it's a dance. It's a dance with our personality. <laughs> and who, who is leading the dance in our life? The internal presence dances with the, what I describe as the externally organized personality. Who, on the other hand of that gentle, sweet, tender, merging place, makes up stories analyzes our experience, has rules, how we're supposed to behave, what people expect of us, limitations, has memories, has traumatic activation, makes assumptions. Whoa, making assumptions, I think, is a really bad place to live. Um, observes life witnesses the moment, even as we witness the moment, oftentimes we're not feeling that moment. We're analyzing, we're stepping back, we're saying, oh my God, what is this going on? Okay, as we witness the moment, we're really not in that merging place. A mother doesn't lie with her infant and witness the infant. <laughs> so anyhow, judges, gets angry, becomes righteous. <laughs> that external little personality or huge personality has a huge agenda and vision of how my life should be. So, and of course it's a big force because it's dancing with this huge force of infinite love and presence. So they do this dance all day long. At least that's what I notice. <laughs> Lots of stuff or chatter or static can take me away from this intimacy of love, connection, peace, joy, celebration, and that real deep knowing that everything that happens to me has happened and will happen to me has always been in my favor. Has always been in my favor, no matter how difficult it has been. It has bumped me around and ultimately has brought me to a place of more love. Yes, God is 
good. God feels good. God is the love that surges and flows through me. God flows. God flows. There is a fluidity. There is a river that is always flowing through us. And when we allow that flow to happen, we really embody and embrace what we say at Oakland Center and in the Science of Mind community. I am a spiritual being having a spiritual experience. Ta-da! In a physical body, in a physical body. So spirit moves through me. Spirit flows through me. Love flows through me. And I feel my life. I feel it. I don't analyze it. <laughs> I feel it. I am present with that intimacy of a mother and a newborn or a lover merging and loving so everything that happens to me whether it has been pleasant or not has shown up in my life to open my heart to feel even more love to feel even more love i feel and believe that i am here to know that truth, to feel it and connect from that place of openness and sweet, vulnerable vulnerability, infused with joy. Yes. Now, I understand this is a noble intention that is simple to implement if we ground in our bodies, feel our hearts and allow the light of the divine to infuse into our center. Just like we did when we were meditating a half an hour ago. It is simple. Jesus himself said, that unless we become like children of God, children, we cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Children live a real simple reality. I try to get real simple with stuff. I'm basically pretty darn simple when it comes to how I participate with this whole thing of embodiment. I get real simple. Children are simple. They feel, they're open, and they love. And I do believe that was the message. So here we go. Our superhero powers. We're going to play superhero because even though this process is simple, it takes intention. Our superhero powers are body. Da -da. Remember, we're spiritual beings having a spiritual experience in a physical body. Our mind. We love our mind. Our mind is our partner in this. Our mind focuses our attention. It comes right back to sensation and breath body that's how we're living out our spiritual experience our mind focuses come on mind help me out here and our breath breath is spirit moving through us breath breath uniting together to bring us into intimacy with ourselves intimacy with the one. Sweet intimacy with ourselves. So, 
my relationship with myself is much like a synchronistic dance between my inner most precious vulnerable self that is filled with joy and spontaneity, bliss, love, enthusiasm, and feeling one with the divine. And my life emerges from there. That is called the mystery. That is tapping into the mystery. We can't figure out life by reading books, no matter how inspiring they are. That's somebody else's experience. My life is emerging from deep within, and that is the mystery. And that's the scary part because we can't figure it out. So I'm having this relationship with that, that part of me, the mystery, the divine, with my external personality self. that has an identity. And that's not a bad thing. Hey, I identified what I'm doing here. Uh, identities are not bad things, you know, but, you know, we work with that. We, we know that, oh, that's an identity. Okay. That identity and either wants to protect me from getting hurt like, no, 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 don't do that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't say that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, do this or they'll like you. Protect me from harm. And there's something to be said about noticing that. But we don't live from protecting ourselves all the time. We kind of like dance with it a little bit. Like, mm, okay, negotiate a little bit. Do those dance steps or perform. It's either wants to protect me or wants to perform. Wants to perform like the good person, you know, wants to rebel, uh, wants to be seen, wants to be heard, has a lot to say, you know, wants to take up a lot of energy in a room, look at me whatever whatever okay we do these these interesting funny little things and they're very much like theater out there and i find myself throughout the day saying whoa regina what are you doing like can you rein that one in a little bit or can you move forward a little bit or you know we have these little conversations um when i am flowing in and enjoying life the most is when I can keep what some spiritual practices say, one eye on the inside, meaning that I am feeling my life. I am connected to my center. And I don't push way out and um, take care of the crowds and I'm used to doing that because I grew up in a large family and I had no center I had no 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 center no sense of self it was always externally oriented what does everybody around me need and you know I was quite small inside so anyhow over the years I have come into a place where I can feel myself throughout the day Feel me, feel the presence. One eye on the inside at all times. Now, that's a huge order. So I know I go in and out of that, but at least to have an intention that I am here also and I'm feeling the presence. flowing through me. This takes focus and agreement with the mind. This is the body, mind, spirit, superhero powers of spiritual intimacy. It is simple. We are, we can become like children. It is simple. Body, mind, 
Okay. So when I am distracted by my personality, okay, and, and I and I say that because the 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 reactivity, those reactive moments are actually teachers. They actually represent unfinished business that are like clogging up the channel. <laughs> so when I'm in a reactive moment during the day or off analyzing, and I know I'm really good at analyzing and I have many platforms to analyze just any situation and I can entertain myself all day long analyzing everything. And you know, it, it, it's not life affirming. It's interesting for my mind and my mind can get hooked on these analysis and I can put everything and every which way into categories. And you know, it's nice dinner talk conversation for a little while, cocktail party or you know, dinner party conversation. Okay. And it has been a very nicely developed resource to keep me safe. And I know that about me. So I can go off analyzing. And by the way, I want to say something because there's something, there's this idea about speaking our truths. We all like, mm, speak my truth. Okay. For the longest time, I thought, unbeknownst to me, in my naivete along the path, I used to think that speaking my truth was valid be, as my truth was my analysis of your behavior. <laughs> and, and I think I'm not the only one that gets caught up in that myth. <laughs> I can speak my truth because I can analyze you really well. That has nothing to do with speaking the truth. That just means that I have many platforms that I have studied. But when I speak my truth, my truth is always my feelings. And it's not my emotions. It's those sensitivities. It is my vulnerability. It is how I am touched. It is how I am loving. It is that gentle vulnerability of the moment at a very essential place. And it is a safe voice. And it's definitely not what I think about what you're doing. <laughs> that is not speaking the truth. And I think maybe there's a mythology around that. Speaking the truth is, comes from a very vulnerable place that we have dropped into that is essential. And it is love emerging and flowing through us. So just a little side note here. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, let's get back. I just sidetracked. Okay, when I'm in a reactive moment, uh, or I'm shifting, analyzing, or upset with some recent situation like at Whole Foods or in the parking lot or I'm driving, uh, or I'm believing some crazy lies that I'm telling myself, and I notice that I'm having an uncomfortable response. Because when we are in those moments of reactivity, there's a physical response that is going on when we are reactive. There is either a squeezing of our center, our spiritual center. Yes, we squeeze spirit quite a bit throughout the day. We numb, and we can numb in many ways with food, alcohol, whatever. Okay, we numb it up because we don't want to feel our center. Or we dissociate and we split, we leave, we go, gee, I don't know. You know, we go, huh? I don't know where I am. We've dissociated, we've left, we've split, we've left town. So we leave, we numb, we squeeze. All of this is going on when we're having a reaction. And these reactions may go unnoticed. However, they're blocking the flow of our enjoyment. 
and our comfort, of our bliss, of love, of that flow that we all are always yearning for. We're always yearning for oneness. We're always yearning for connection. We just want to feel love, but that love we want can only be satisfied by that connection with spirit first. Otherwise, our, our love is needy. We're needing somebody and we're grabbing on somebody and we're squeezing on somebody or we're missing on somebody or we're feeling disappointed on somebody. And yet we just want to feel love. Okay. What we put our attention on will continue to magnify. We teach this all the time. Energy follows thought. So if we put our attention on our stories and our reactivity and our beliefs, the brain will create circuits that keep that in place. The more we tell ourselves these stories, the more they become embedded in our brain centers. The brain centers hold memories and beliefs and they get like, eh, like stuck. And we keep in that same groove because we keep repeating the story and repeating the story. We repeat our story about our childhood and how awful it was. And this is what happened to us. And of course, this is going to happen because it happened back then. And she does this and she does that. And oh my God, these grooves stay in place. And the only thing that will dislodge them is going into the body. We address it through the body in our simple little superheroes. If we don't address it through the body and we stay in the story, we're going to keep doing the same dance steps. That big personality is going to lead us across the dance floor, repeating and repeating and repeating. It is a boring partner when it gets into repeating these stories, trust me. It's exhausting. And then at the end of the day, we're really, really tired because we've been doing the same dance steps and we're in the same groove and it exhausts and wears out our body. That can contribute to aging. A very wise person said, and they're like, wow, this is really true. We don't really age so much as we keep layering up our stories. <laughs> we keep putting more and more layers on our stories and it stays fixed in our body until we can't move. <laughs> Very interesting way of looking at the world, at least I think so. I'm, I'm kind of amused in so many ways, believe it or not, <laughs> or as intense as I can be, I am very amused by what I see around me. Not just me, not just others, but myself and he, of course. Like I go, wow, Regina, you're like, whoa, you're doing that? And I laugh at myself. Okay. So I suggest instead of doing an immediate affirmative prayer, da -da -da, which will alleviate the discomfort and the reaction, for a little bit of time, it will indeed, it will flick it off and alleviate it for a little bit of time. However, my experience, and maybe I'm unique, and maybe I am, because you know I kind of live in this crazy, not crazy, I live in this body world. So maybe my experience is unique, uh, and maybe, it's different for a lot for others, but I know <clears throat> it will alleviate the discomfort for a little bit of time. However, if we flip right into affirmative prayer, it will keep us out of feeling the breath and sustaining comfort. I mean, sustaining comfort, meaning for a long time. So a region. <laughs> 
a recent coaching client of me said, hey, I just push the story away. I just push it away and it leaves. No, this particular person has been dealing with the same challenges around self-confidence for a while. And when I said, hey, what about your story? And he said, well, Ma, I just push it away. And I kind of chuckled to myself because immediately I had this image of somebody throwing a cat out of a room who was scratching and whining for attention. And you put the cat out of the room, and I know this is true for my cat. I put the cat out of the room, and moments later, my cat is right outside the door again. So it is important not to analyze right away and ask and ask why. Like, why am I feeling this way? And, hmm, why is this going on? but to engage with sensations. Sensation is spirit's language. Instead, we can feel the reaction first. Where is that? Like, ah, somebody's annoying me like this, this kid in the restaurant, like, ah, shut him up, ah, okay. Where am I feeling that reaction? Where can I feel it first? Instead of what we usually do when we are activated and uncomfortable, the per personality part of us typically steps into controlling the dance and makes up a story and searches for a belief analyzes or even observes observation is distancing us that process keeps the personality in control or the mind in control <clears throat> and not so much connected to spirit in the blissful state of love and spiritual intimacy so when we're off analyzing and searching for beliefs and asking why, we're not in an intimate relationship. We've flipped into our minds and we're trying to figure it out. We are no longer enjoying the dance, but being led by our reactivity. We are not present with sensation at that time. Remember, sensation and feeling is the language of spiritual intimacy, not analysis. We don't analyze a crying baby. We comfort the baby. So what if we do instead this process of feel it, heal it, reveal it? And you know, the last time I spoke, we went through this very quickly. We went through it, maybe not so quickly. But anyhow, we're going to revisit it because it is primary. So basically, when we are feeling uncomfortable, and let's just try this right now because I know it's getting later and people, are, I would like you know to hear what people have to say, even if it's for a short period, okay? So let's just review it. When we are activated, first thing we do is where in my body am I feeling the hit? So let's just take a second or two. This is not a uh, lengthy process, okay? I'm at a restaurant and we all have our scenarios and I'm taking mine. It's like, ah, oh God, um, kid. Shouting, it's like, I just want to enjoy this restaurant. Ugh, where am I feeling it? Mm. And I know that I feel it in the part of my body. What does it feel like? Get curious with the sensation. Instead of tracking beliefs, track sensation. Remember, sensation is the language of spirit. Spirit is saying, uh-uh, you got to open this up a little bit more for love, Regina. You're contracting on me. 
it's a, what does it feel like? Mm. It's squeezing, it's, it's in the part of squeezing. What am I needing right now? So we wait for a second and your soul will speak to you with a very simple, gentle voice generally of comfort, like breathe, just get grounded a little bit, Regina, open up, it's all okay, you're okay, it's quite pleasant here, Ta-da. Okay. simple three-step process, where, what am I, what does it feel like, what am I needing right now? That will shift it very quickly. Then, only then, you can do a nice little affirmative prayer. You've got all of what you need all lined up. Now you can affirm, okay? You know, I am safe, I am comfortable, I am surrounded by you know, infinite love and presence. I can let my body relax. Da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da. But you have made the connection with intimacy. You're not scolding. You're not analyzing. All of that is eliminated. And it becomes a very beautiful and, 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 and intimate experience. So anyhow, quickly, quickly. Not so quickly, I guess. These are simple relationship guidelines to fall in love with yourself and create spiritual intimacy. Let this synchronistic dance of the internal spiritual center <sighs> and the external worldly teacher of personality and activation. And we love that part. It's like, ah, uh, it's showing us our work. So we can love more. It's just saying, hmm, check this out. Or what about this? And whoa, okay, we're going to do this for a while. Okay. As we unwind and release more love into our system, and reveal the magnificent being that you are. Just want to do a little tag on and then I'm going to complete, okay. Ernest Holmes says, Tara, we recognize that we cannot do this by the intellect alone. Our work has a feeling about it a feeling of the divine presence and the emotion of infinite love. And thank you, thank you, thank you for your very blessed attention. And now, ta-da, I guess we can have a little bit of sharing as maybe people want to speak to how they do their dance. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Thank you, Regina. I'm going to start. First, you said three steps, can I, and I've been trying to write them down, but can you give me key words? First, you said, where in my body am I feeling the hit? Yes. Okay, so that's the, so key word for me is where. Right. Okay. Then you said the second step was get, curious with the sensation yeah what what does it feel like okay thank you hold on don't move too fast i'm not going anywhere <laughs> <laughs> okay so where what does it feel like and what am i needing right now exactly how can you comfort yourself what are you needing then once you listen for it, you'll get a response. 
Absolutely. <clears throat> and that's okay. where you get, that's where you affirm the response. Yes. Well, you give that to yourself. Like, I just need to know I'm not alone. I just need to know I'm not, I'm safe. And you talk to yourself in gentle, kind ways. So you're basically talking yourself off the ledge. <laughs> yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to recap the three, the three steps for the shift. Where? <clears throat> where in my body? What does it feel like? What do I need? Exactly. And listen. Yes then affirm. You can then do an affirmative prayer if that's part of your practice. Perfect. I, I just needed the... the you so, got it. It's simple, basic. I'm a simple yep, I just girl. needed a one, two, three clarification. I know, and I love these little sweet one, two, threes. Because <laughs> they, can, they can save me. <laughs> they save me all day long. See, I learned something new from you today, and that's the purpose of Wednesday night with Regina Buckwalter. See, mm -hmm. I loved how you were vulnerable about it, all of it, and and you really um, the whole dance idea, and it's just great. So thank you. You're so welcome. So if there's anybody else that we have just a few minutes, but if you have a question or you want to make a comment. If you could turn your camera on and raise your hand or use the reaction button. Uh, I'm sure Regina would like a little feedback. I know Reverend Jerry's sending you a heart symbol. Yeah. Um, if there's anybody else that would like to say something about the, her process that she presented tonight, um, now's the time. Please step forward. I'd like to say, let's dance. Thank you, Regina. So <laughs> your words awesome. of wisdom. Yes, lovely. Yeah. Always. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I appreciate first the connection with my body and the depths of that connection and how that can move me. And I, uh, so much more I can say with that, but it, thank you. Thank you very welcome, much. Stephen. Thank you for coming, Stephen. You're welcome. I'll say something. Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Hi. Hi, Hi everybody. Hi. Thanks, Re thanks, Regina, so much. Um, I think what I'm carrying away tonight is um, I want to fix what I'm feeling right away. And I like what you said about um, don't go right to uh, affirmative prayer, kind of stay with it and feel it. And um, I like to often bypass my body and get into the solution quite quickly so that um, I don't have to feel whatever it is that's going on. And um, for me, that means slow down and pay attention and stay put, right? Because, oh, I've got this pain here and what can I do? Maybe I'll go get an aspirin or, um, or maybe I'll just pray. And, and to me, um, that never works. It, I still have the ache or the pain or whatever it is that's going on and the feeling behind that, whatever the feeling is that's actually causing the ache or the pain. So um, I appreciate your saying, stay there and um, no matter how long that takes and see what see what comes out of that. And, and the ending of that for me really is self-love. You know, um, I, I think the journey is towards learning to love myself. Um, that's a much harder thing than to love out there mm -hmm. for me. Um, so yeah, thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand on this journey and pay attention to it. Um, and I appreciate your, your talk a lot. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Denisha, okay. is that you? Yes, it's me. Um, so me personally, like thank you so much for for that. Um, it also made me think about um 
like like what was mentioned before about just wanting to just find an answer or you get so stuck in like trying to find a solution instead of sitting with it, feeling it to learn from it. Um, it also, for me, I thought about food, like what we put into our bodies, because sometimes, um, you know, we'll just keep on and keep on. And, but when we, when we sit with that feeling like, you know what, I just had this, I don't feel well. And, and trying to figure out where in the body, you know, you can sense that inflammation or whatever you're going through. And then you, you become more conscious of the things that you put into it and you know a whole array of um just just other things but um also like um yeah also engaging with sensations and instead of always trying to just like get rid of it right away really um uh just to really learn <laughs> you know, because if we just patch it or, or, you know, move on, we're not learning from it and how to move differently and, and, and to have that real self-love, you know, um, self-love is also through being conscious and, yeah. and being present. So, yeah, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. You're so welcome. Everything you said is so true. My experience. <laughs> that yes. Anyone else? Jeff, are you trying to talk? Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, Regina, I, I wanted to say that I appreciate how you give an insight into your inner world and what all this means for you. And that to me makes it a lot more rich than just a reciting of of what you've learned along the process along the way uh, because i get a sense of the of the vibrancy and the immediacy that all this has for you, you. so i like this thank you thanks for coming <laughs> thanks for thanks for plugging me in so i could be here <laughs> <laughs> So true, so true. <clears throat> Anyone else? If not, um, let's show our appreciation for Regina. Thank you. I appreciate the one, two, three, pause, and then affirm. I'm going to practice that right away. So thank you, Regina. You're um, so welcome. Yeah, so we have some announcements that um, we need to quickly make and not many tonight. So um, first of all, thank you for Regina. Thank you for everyone for coming. Um, Peter, when you're ready, we can talk about what's coming up. We have a very exciting Sunday coming um, on July 10th, this Sunday. Practitioner and ministerial student Lucian Baker and Reverend Eloise Oliver are going to be together and they'll engage us on the topic of you and I are we. And then after the service, Reverend E will be holding a book signing of her new book she just released. So please join us in person with meditation at 10 and the service at 1030. We are now streaming directly to YouTube and the link is on the homepage if you choose to watch the service from home. Next Wednesday, July 6th, practitioner and ministerial student Lucian Baker will return to continue that theme of you and I are we. Our Wednesday night services um, have meditation at 6.30 and the services at 7. And Wednesday night services will remain on Zoom. We have a note from our youth and family ministry. We're back with a quiet room. This was a practice they did years ago um, and, and is often practiced in a lot of churches and centers. So our social hall and nursery are open and, the, and we have a complimenting our child to complement our child friendly Sunday service. But to accommodate our growing families, if you wish, you can watch while nursing or hanging out with your littlest ones during the Sunday service in the social hall 
and in the nursery. Um, we are streaming it on the big TV in the social hall and families can watch the service if they need to be quiet with their child and, and just have a moment to do something with them and to practice that intimacy that um, Regina so eloquently brought forward. Um, they can do that in the nursery and watch it on their own device. We have even more youth events, classes, and volunteer opportunities, and they are coming very soon. So stay tuned. Youth and Family is growing. As always, for information on all that is going on at our Oakland Center, visit our website at oaklandcsl.org, and be sure to check out our events page. Don't forget, you can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. And if you're not receiving it already, please sign up for our weekly newsletter on the homepage, The Village News. So let's take a moment and read the new minister's covenant together. I'll read it if you'll follow along. There is only one life. This life is good. This life is God. This is my life now. In knowing that I am one with this life that is God, I therefore know that I am one with all of its blessed expressions, which includes the presence of a new minister for my beloved spiritual community. Because I know that the highest purpose of my new minister is to reveal spirit, I therefore know that my new minister is a revelation of God as wisdom. I further know that my new minister is the fulfillment of that which has been promised by spirit, for it is written, I am filled with divine wisdom. I allow divine mind to fill my mind now. As I stand in agreement with my beloved community, I see my new minister revealed before me as unity in the community. I now intend to experience my new minister in full cooperation and agreement with my community, knowing that this truth about myself for I am inspiring unity and diversity, embracing and nourishing our community. I am awakening the wisdom within. I am healing and expanding our community with the power of love. I am engaging the community and building a world that works for everyone. I am deepening family consciousness. As I now accept the highest expression of a new minister into my life, I know that they are revealed in a way that illumines spirit and serves the highest and greatest good of all who are touched by their presence. I am grateful. God is gracious, and so it is. Ashe. So in this moment of gratitude, in this moment of deep connection with spirit, calling forth our new minister, I'm also grateful for all the work and the time and the treasure and the talent that goes on at the center. I'm grateful for, for all the contributions folks make in those many arenas. Um, so Peter, if we can go to the next slide, we'll read our, our um, offering statement for the evening. When we do choose to give to the Oakland Center, we give with an attitude of abundance, knowing that as I give, I do receive. And so it is. If you'd like to give in a financial way, we have several ways to do it. You, on the homepage, the donate button for credit cards, or you can mail it, or you can text it at the number shown there. If you know Zell and use Zell, you can Zell at giving at Oakland at CSL.org. And if you choose to come in person on Sunday, we have baskets ready to receive your generous gift, for which I thank you. So while I'm thanking, I want to thank all the folks that participated in the service tonight. I definitely want to recognize our Zoom team, Peter and Sabrina and Alice, um, all the work that the administration team of Constance, Peggy and John do to feed us the information. Zoe is always here to back me up. And we're all so very fortunate to have our own Reverend Jerry here. Um, I'm, absolutely almost every Wednesday, unless she's in Hawaii, and I'm sure she'd squeeze it in then if she could. So, and that's not very often. She's been working hard and it just makes me feel great to know that she's here with us on Wednesdays. So thank you to all um, the folks that make this center work. Um, I'm extremely grateful. Again, thank you, Regina. We appreciate you. I don't think I've forgotten anything except for 
the way we start is the way we end, and that's with prayer. So, Jana, um, mm. would you be willing to um, close us with that? Absolutely. <clears throat> mm. With great gratitude for the evening, as we rest and feel the presence. <clears throat> Returning to the breath and the belly, moving into the heart and moving upward into the higher brain centers. These are our anchor points, our returning home points, our places of comfort, knowing that the presence is always moving around and through, in and out, opening and expanding love, self-love, emanating out as we touch one another with this beautiful presence of love and light in the world as we do rest peacefully. And with such great gratitude for all of those that have gathered here tonight and served the evening as we come together for the Wednesday Oasis, illuminating and nourishing the community. And so it is. And so it is. <laughs>